Hello and welcome to our new episode on how can email marketing transform your e-commerce business. Today with Cosmin Costa from Ecom Masters. Hello Cosmin. Hi, hi Sebastian. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here as well because today we have a really interesting topic, email marketing. And it happens that your company is specialized in email marketing. So I would like to know much more from you about email marketing. When we had our pre-discussion and you said you are specialized in email marketing, I was like, email marketing? You mean the newsletters? <laughs> and then you were like, no, 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 there's much, much more. So maybe first you can introduce your company, what you are doing, and then we can dive in um, the topic email marketing a bit more. Sure, definitely. So... Uh, my company, Ecom Masters, is specialized in uh, email marketing and uh, supporting e-commerce businesses uh, grow. And uh, we are doing this uh, very thoroughly uh, with, uh, with uh, structured teams that deliver email marketing uh, mm -hmm. performance. So this is like in a, in a nutshell. And email marketing, of course, I mean, not of course, email marketing is not just sending newsletter, but I guess we're going to deep dive in that a uh, bit later. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, email marketing in, in general, what I understand under email marketing and what I did in the past was we were just making an email, making it nice, getting the database from the customers we had in our online shop and then sending out an email. And normally we didn't have so many responses. So that's why I came to the conclusion or to the assumption Email marketing is dead because it, it doesn't work. But um, how are you doing email marketing? So how, how does it look when somebody would be, I mean, I would be your client. I'm having my sports nutrition online shop. I'm coming to you, Cosmin, and say, hey, Cosmin, um, I heard you are email marketing specialist. I have a big database. How can we do email marketing for with, with you? How does it work? Indeed. Coming back a little bit to, to your uh, initial topic, we have mm -hmm. customers who say 20% uh, of my sales are coming from email marketing or 30%. Wow. And it gets to a really challenging uh, proposal that uh, they say, yeah, can you beat that? And yes, of course we can, but it <laughs> takes a lot of work. It's not, uh, it's not yeah. uh, easy. So um, how does it work? So... Initially, people uh, think about email marketing as sending emails. But if you go deep, and this is what we, we do, we, we go deep mm -hmm. into this, uh, uh, this service for e-commerce, you need to do some other stuff as well. First, let's discuss the broad topics. In marketing, in marketing in general, but let's uh, stick to digital marketing for, for our discussion. Mm -hmm. There are two big kinds of activities what we call acquisition marketing, getting customers, and what we call retention marketing, making the customers who already bought from you buy again and yeah. maybe eventually say nice things about you to their friends and family so that other people also come and yeah. buy. We are focusing exclusively on the retention part of the marketing, retention and loyalty. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we don't do uh, stuff that gets you new customers, which might sound crazy. But when you think that you might have uh, 100,000 customers who already bought from you and you are not doing anything to make them come back, then I think it makes sense to, to focus on the ones who already bought and where you already had a chance to prove that you are a serious uh, e-commerce uh, player and basically you deliver what you, you promised. So our uh, st uh, seven-step process, we have a seven-step uh, process mm -hmm. uh, for uh, email marketing. Starts with a data-driven audit of whatever you have been doing uh, before in your sport nutrition shop, mm -hmm. including auditing the, the actual tool that you were using and all okay. the campaigns, all the automations. So this is the, the base. Sometimes people never done uh, email marketing. And then we start from... Uh, marketing uh, market best practices and this mm -hmm. is this becomes our starting point the second step is to define a strategy for your email marketing activities which okay. is of course par part of your retention uh, strategy yeah yeah and to define uh, uh, what we call a uh, 
work plan. What, who does what, what do we have to do and by when. This is the second step. The third step is to take your um, your brand book or whatever uh, uh, mm-hmm. branding assets you have and put them in the context of email marketing and create what we, we call the creative concept of email marketing. Mm-hmm. So, of course, every communication should have your branding, but the way you communicate through this channel should be very specific and we help you with, with that. And then we have two a bit technical parts. Uh, one is integration of the ESP, email service provider. So integration of the tool that you use for email marketing with your mm-hmm. e-commerce platform. So you, we can pull for you data, like uh, what your customers uh, viewed, what categories, what products, what products did they mm-hmm. have to basket and so on. And then the setup of the email uh, service provider, because it needs a lot of settings to be uh, to, to start running uh, campaigns in automations. Uh, then the sixth step is to increase the database. Now, the sixth step is optional mm-hmm. uh, because some companies do have a big database. But our yeah. threshold is this. If you have under 100,000 subscribers, you need to increase the database to above 100 so you have proper traction. And increasing Adjust the database... The number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is, this is the, the number. So we have 50,000. We can help you get another 50,000. So you uh, pass this threshold, this uh, 100,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. And then your marketing efforts really show up. And the last thing, and then I'm going to let you uh, keep shooting questions, is um, optimization, execution of the campaigns and autom- auto- automations, and mm-hmm. optimization of them. Pulling learnings and doing better with every campaign and with every... Uh, automation. Yeah, so this is the the process. Like in simple terms, the process. Um, if I would now come to you, so I understood you work with several even providers. So if I have Mailchimp or Mailjet, you work with this. But also, if I'm saying I've never done an email marketing, can you provide me with an email marketing tool? You can also come up with a tool that you work with. Indeed, indeed. So if you have a preferred email marketing tool, then we're going to use your preferred email marketing tool. Okay. If you are not satisfied with, uh, with yours or you are browsing for, for, the, for the first time to start this activity, then we will recommend you a tool that we use and it's very, uh, very powerful and with a very good uh, cost. And uh, maybe we can, we can have your listeners uh, uh, write in the chat if they want to know which tool we use. You can also okay. We can we can also write it in the. You can also say it. I mean, I don't uh, mind. Of course, of course, of course. But let's have some interaction because it's not just two talking heads. Let's yes. have people ask. Let's let's have people ask what what are we using or let's ask them what are they using just out of Indeed. curiosity because I I mean I'm as I said before there are lots of email marketing providers but the tool that you are using as I understood is quite quite professional. And you can do a lot with it because um, as I understood from our pre-discussion that we had about this topic, it's not just you send one newsletter out. No, there's much more what I understood. Can you elaborate a bit more? How how does it look when you send an email out? What is the process behind? Or just to explain our Indeed. or e-commerce business owners, what, what is there more what you are doing? Yeah, so... Everything starts from the strategy, which we discussed that, that we're going to be building. Mm-hmm. But from the execution point of view, from the every campaign automation execution, everything starts from the marketing calendar, which is uh, part of a, of a bigger ca- calendar, the commercial calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we can help with building this calendar <clears throat> and we can help with managing this calendar. Now, what, what does the calendar have? So first, it has two things. Events that are uh, calendar events, so-called calendar events, so let's say Black Friday or uh, or Christmas Mm -hmm. or uh, Valentine's Day. And then we have events that are happening in your geography, like a big, uh, big rock concert. Maybe there is some connection that you can you can build on that big, uh, big rock concert. Yeah. And these are the starting points. And then we add what we call our customers uh, commercial interest. And that is, uh, what do you want to sell in this week? What do you want to sell? Do you want to sell 
specific things because you have a high stock on something or you know you mm-hmm. need to uh, to to or have a good margin on some products and you need to move them and then yeah. of course this drives the uh, the activity or you decide to go with the flow to to build something for black friday for valentine's day for a big rock concert and use this uh, this uh, event to build your communication after that we decide what product product categories uh, or product individual products we're going to promote mm-hmm. to a target group a target group is basically a segment of your total audience of the total number of people who are uh, subscribed to your newsletter so we send targeted emails to them with products that you want to sell basically because we are yeah. uh, helping our customers make more money but also to specific target groups we send emails with what's so called uh, dynamic products so rather okay. than us the agency or the customer choosing what products should we push into a uh, newsletter we let the tool use the artificial intelligence to decide what is the best product to be to be pushed and oh, usually okay. we have something like uh, three uh, a block of three products or maximum mm-hmm. six uh, products which are totally customized to each customer to each recipient potentially a customer so then if you send 100,000 emails you might actually send 100,000 different emails because people have different uh, past behaviors that we can use as uh, as uh, triggers to personalize their uh, email wow and, uh, so that means like that means like it's really personalized on on the user so if i for example i looked at these th- three last products when I was the last time on my spots on tr- online shop, I will see probably exactly these three products that I was looking in, or maybe some products that I might be interested in. Indeed, indeed. And now this is uh, the part where uh, uh, we have human thinking, human logic, mm-hmm. building algorithms, uh, and the algorithms take takes the take the human logic uh, to the next level. Because human logic would say. If you look at cereals, how you promote milk, right? Because maybe yes. it makes sense. But then we need to add some uh, some layers to this because maybe uh, maybe somebody would buy milk anyway, and why promote it? So exactly, then, <laughs> yeah. So then you might uh, spend, uh, let's say, ten percent uh, uh, incentive uh, for something that the people would buy anyway. So there is a lot of uh, thinking behind how we uh, train the model to recommend the uh, the, the products, and uh, not always the most the, the first thing that comes to your mind is the best. So you need to think uh, deeper, and this is what we do. We think deeper and do stuff for uh, for our customers. Now coming back to your question, uh, it's not necessarily that you see the same products. Maybe. You see uh, complementary products uh, from the same mm-hmm. uh, uh, same uh, interest. So you're, you're yeah. looking for uh, for running products, and then you see other running products, mm-hmm. or you see uh, some kind of uh, upsell. You see more premium brand versus the one that you saw, or you see some kind of uh, uh, bigger bundle. So you try to to buy a small uh, small quantity, and you uh, we we give you a. Uh, you make an upsell for, uh, for 1.5 yeah. kilograms instead of 500 gram. Mm-hmm. Indeed, because there is uh, some uh, some saving there, and uh, of course we want to get the uh, the order for our customers. Now this is the automated part. There is mm-hmm. also a, uh, a manual part, and the manual part is based uh, on uh, something that we call uh, RFM segmentation. And RFM, these initials come from uh, recency, frequency, and monetary, which basically means when was the last order, and that is recency. Mm -hmm. Frequency, how many orders in the last 12 months had this specific customer had. And monetary, total money amount of uh, of, uh, his or her orders. And based on this, we build segments. And segments can start from four segments, the, the easy, the starter segmentation, to 10 or 12 segments to, for the detail segmentation. And for each oh. of them, we send different newsletters with different products, of course, 
but also with different messages. Because if, you, if your frequency uh, is maybe not so high, then this is our aim. You are buying from us, but not frequent enough. And if we go even deeper, we can even think of the, let's say, normal frequency of buying, let's say, sports supplements. You and I do sports, so we, we take supplements, we take uh, protein powder, for example, and uh, it's not hard for somebody to know uh, when our, our big bottle of protein uh, powder will, uh, will finish. So yeah. uh, th this could be a, a trigger. And also th there is something uh, regarding people that haven't bought from you from a while. And then you need to send uh, an email welcoming them back, asking them to come back and maybe check out some new brands that you, you yeah. got in your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. And all, all this uh, thinking behind makes uh, sending personalized emails very very effective in terms of, uh, of course, of revenue. Of um, course. I mean, it's much more advanced than what I understood under evil marketing. It's not just a newsletter. No, <laughs> you, you yeah. do much, much more. It's like the automation part with the segments. I didn't even know with the segments that, that this is possible and that you can do this. And of course, then the conversion rate is much, much higher than if you're just sending like one newsletter. And hope I mean, for we the didn't... Best. <laughs> yes, I hope, hope for the best. We didn't even discuss now the copywriting part, because I guess also for the copywriting and so on, let's, you have also uh, some strategies. Yeah, let's discuss this, uh, this part. So <clears throat> copywriting is extremely important in uh, mainly two areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first area is uh, subject line because you need people to open and uh, in order for them to open the, yeah. your email, the first thing that they see is the subject line, some other stuff, but subject line is key. And yeah. then uh, the text within the email and the text within the email is split in two. Uh, sometimes we use an opening paragraph not to go with products uh, from the start, just an opening paragraph regarding mm -hmm. I don't know what's uh, what's up in uh, in uh, autumn uh, running or in uh, in summer uh, uh, swimming, just to build mm -hmm. the context and of course then offer some products, and then very important is also the what you have in the product area, the product titles, the uh, the call to action next to to the products, and maybe even a closing paragraph where you uh, tell a little bit of a, of a story to to bond to to create a relationship with the customer. So uh, regarding text, this is what you do, what we do for uh, uh, commercial emails. So emails where you want to sell something, mm -hmm. but there are also non-commercial emails. And this is part of the, of the marketing calendar and of, of the strategy. And that is only brand building uh, emails. So we just send information to people regarding your chosen area, let's say sports nutrition, uh, mm -hmm. giving them something. Something like an article that, that we wrote, something like a uh, uh, comes to mind now a competition calendar. This is a very, very uh, good email to send. So if I know you're running, I can send you the 2024 competition calendar. Uh, so you can, uh, you can have it all in one place and start preparing or for any sport. And this is highly appreciated uh, because it, uh, it's a lot of work to put, to put together the calendar. And then of course, if we, we yeah. send it, it's... Uh, yeah, it's good. I have so many things to share. Uh, <laughs> I, I can I can see. I mean, there's a lot. We didn't discuss vouchers and so on, but um, I guess you also have this. I also understood loyalty program. This is also something that you can do with this email marketing. So how does this work? Because um, I only know this concept from really big, big brands, which they are offering. So how does it work mm -hmm. when I'm like a smaller e-commerce shop? So how does it work for that? How can you implement this? Sure, I'll deep dive in loyalty. But first, if I may just add something to the previous discussion, and that mm -hmm. is KPIs. What KPIs you should follow when you do email marketing? Ah, yes, yes. Gonna, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Let me, I mean, this is a big, <laughs> big thing. I'm, I'm also curious about how you measure the success of this email marketing. I mean, you told me now a lot Indeed. about how to implement it. So now we need to figure out how do we measure this email marketing success? Indeed. Indeed. Um, in the end, um, 
I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm a bit sorry to be so blunt. Uh, value that we provide to our customer is all that matters. Because <clears throat> otherwise, why why would we even start doing this? And yeah. value by our customers is measured in um, in two things. One would be uh, profits, which would be ideal. So how much mm-hmm. money is he or her making yeah. in the end? But maybe profit is a bit harder to to be influenced by a uh, direct communication channel. And a good metric is revenue. How much do we increase the revenue of that uh, customer? And for increasing revenue, let's step back a bit. So in order to increase sales, you need people to come to your site, people to buy. So Mm -hmm. first we have a ratio of people coming and people buying. And from the people that buy, to buy more, to have a bigger uh, basket. Yeah. So the, the equation is quite quite simple. Number of people coming, number of people buying, and average yeah. uh, order value. So we try to, to, to make this higher. More people to come, more conversion, higher AOV. Yeah. And now if we move even back to the source, in order to have people coming to your site from email marketing, people need to click something in your, uh, in your email. That would be good, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. It would make sense. In order for people to, to click, people need to see the newsletter, right? To open the newsletter. Yes, if it's like in junk or if they are not interested <laughs> in opening Indeed. it. Indeed. Indeed. And then in order to, to open it, they need to see it. And in order for them to see it, they, it needs to be in an inbox, not in junk, maybe not even in promotions, right? Yes. Now let's talk a bit about what we can do about every of uh, each of these steps. So first thing we need to do, and this is what we do for our customers, is to make sure our, our emails land in inbox, not spam, not promotions. And for thi- this, we, we use uh, a couple of things. First, technology things, the, the sender itself. So the tool that we use for sending the emails, it needs to be a a high performance uh, uh, tool that uh, let's say Google, Gmail and Yahoo and uh, the mm-hmm. normal uh, clients see as a trusted source, but also not to send the same email to 100,000 people. Because if you send the e- same email to 100,000 people, it's obviously a promotion and it's not I personalized. I mean, yeah, if, if 20,000 or 50,000 have Google Mail, Google Mail is not stupid. The Google servers exactly. will recognize hey, it's the same email that everyone becomes and then I'm blocking it automatically because it's the same. Which, which makes sense because it, it's yes. the same. So first, we, we make sure that it lands in inbox. Second, if it lands in inbox, we need to make sure that people open it. And in order to open it, the most important thing is the subject line. So writing a proper subject line from copywriting perspective is it's really, really important. And uh, I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but I cannot write good subject lines. You need professional people to, to write subject lines. You need to work with real professionals. It's not something that you just do. I mean, yes, I, I'm also not so creative. So maybe a bit AI would help me, but still I'm not, I'm not a professional in writing email subject lines. Yeah. Yep. So again, uh, this means that you need to have a, uh, have a professional and also to, to learn from your previous sense, to see what worked and what didn't work for each segment, for each time of the year, yeah. for each uh, product category. And now we got the email opened. Now the content needs to be relevant for the person reading it. So we help them click on a link. And sending relevant content to, to relevant people, it's our, our tool to get clicks. And yeah. now people land. They click and they land on the web shop. Mm-hmm. What do they see on the web shop? Is it consistent with what uh, we promised in the newsletter? It must be, because otherwise it will land and bounce, go out, right? Of course, if you, for example, would send them just to the homepage. Um... Indeed. They would be like, what, what, what do I want here? Yes. I just clicked on this product and... Now I expect it to be directly on this article page so that I can buy it. And when you get to the, the home page, I mean, of course, the people is bounce. It's, uh, they're, they're getting frustrated and they, they bounce, they, they get out. But then we can also steer uh, the revenue itself because we might promote to some people, which we know from the past that they bought rather expensive stuff. 
also premium brands rather than average brands because we know their purchasing power is high so why not send something that is relevant to them this is on yeah. the revenue side but we can also do something else of course with the help with of our customer the the e-commerce owner and that is decide which products have be- better margin and not focus on the revenue but on the margin side and send or promote products that have better margin or we can send products that have lower stock rotation so they are standing there in stock for a while and we need to move them because the new season is coming or uh, or uh, yeah. uh, you you have some commercial interest and then we can do that so we have a lot of tools in order to increase something good that could be revenue that could be profit that could be stock rotation yeah and you can somehow also steer it in a direction so for example if this business owner says hey I have this product line. It was such a bit mistake that I bought it, but I need to get rid of it. And can we do like a promotion on this on email marketing? Or for example, hey, what you said, there's this new season coming. There's this new product line. We need to get rid of this. What can we do? Indeed. Maybe we send vouchers. Maybe we can say a promotion and so on. So for this is perfect when they work with you. So you can help them to steer it in the direction they want to have it. Indeed, but you need, I mean, you don't need, but it's good if you have a commercial mind rather than a tool mind. So you have a tool, you have email marketing, we have SMS marketing, we have push notifications, we have millions of tools. The the key here is the commercial thinking. How do I help my customer make money rather than how do I send emails? Because anybody can send emails, but making money from them or providing some other kind of value, profit or stock rotation, that is the I wouldn't say the magic because it would mean that uh, <laughs> there is a magic box. That is the, the deep knowledge, I must say, it, that uh, you, you need to provide. Yes, because there are lots of agencies out there that offer email marketing, but it's not as deep as um, you guys are offering it, what I understood. I mean, you have a lot of things that you do before in order to send it. And how I know it from the classic agencies, Yeah, we just do a newsletter and we write here the subject, we send it out and you see nothing happened. Let's continue with Facebook or with Google or something else. Indeed, indeed. And we need to touch on uh, on some other topics uh, before we dive into loyalty. <clears throat> and that is exactly what you said. We send a newsletter with the risk of being a little bit uh, arrogant. Uh, when we get into a discussion and people say, So you're basically sending newsletters. We understand there is a lack of fit between what we do and what uh, the customer needs. So if you think we are just sending newsletters after a discussion like like we just have, then maybe it's not not a total fit between our services and and, uh, the customer. And also on the second uh, part of your question, how do we know if a sale came from email marketing or from other channels. Because as we know, people interact with uh, with a lot of channels and a lot of touch points and so many times before, yeah. before they decide to, to buy. I, uh, the, this number de- depends, of course, of the industry and the many factors, but some people say it's in the range of 10 to 12. So if 10 to 12 uh, touch points and interactions are needed for somebody to make a purchase, then maybe mm-hmm. two or three of them are, are through the email marketing. And how do we do the attribution of, uh, of the email marketing uh, mar- uh, channel for that specific cell? And uh, till now, we had very simple data. We decided on the first click, last click, mm-hmm. and some kind, uh, kind of other attribution models. But now we have something that works better, right? Uh, from, uh, from Google Analytics, which we are quite excited about. And uh, this is called data-driven attribution, which basically lets uh, lets Google decide, which I'm not totally comfortable with. But of course, it's the black well, box. You don't know what it's the doing. black box. <laughs> but for now, it seems to be quite reliable. So uh, when, when we test it, and how do we test it? And this is maybe good for any channels and anybody. How do you test the real impact of a marketing channel in your sales? And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to turn it off. Turn it off for one week or two weeks 
and see how much your uh, your sales uh, go down. Of course, you take a hit because the sales will go down, but then you know exactly what is the impact of that uh, the specific uh, channel. Of course, you need to to build a bit of this control. Is, this environment. is a really drastic measure. <laughs> it is. I tried it, and it really works. And if you have maybe some uh, low season time and the sales are not great anyway, maybe that is a good time to, to test and learn rather than... So the best is not for season. Black Friday or Christmas. In, it's yeah, better to do this Black more in, in, I don't know, probably in, in, in June or July or August. Depends on you. If you're selling beer, maybe June uh, would also not be a yeah, good Yeah, yeah, yes, or yes, ice cream. I agree. Indeed. Depends, Indeed. depends on, the, on the season for the business. But yeah, Indeed. in a period where there is normally not so much um, going on and it's not Indeed. a big cost. And, And it needs uh, discipline. So it needs to, to, to build a control environment because if you are uh, comparing a normal season with a, a normal week with a previous week when you had a 15% discount on everything, then it's not a control environment and uh, you get yeah. biased results. Yeah. Shall we talk about loyalty then? Yes, I wanted just <laughs> to ask you... If I, I know, but I wanted to I wanted to understand and was also, I think, really good for our um, viewers and listeners to understand better how how do you measure the success of an email campaign and what what else is there to to know about? Because this is exactly I, I have to go again on this. This is exactly what I think business owners first understand. You just send newsletters? No. It's more about this. And I think this is really, really important because I think you will also ask for a higher price than just sending a newsletter because normally what I know from other agencies, they ask maybe 50 or 100 euros for an email newsletter, but it's just one email. And for you, it's so much more value that you bring on the table. So of course your price is higher and um, you will also have much better success because um, it's much more professional, much more USP in it, much more personalization, much more data. So this brings a lot more on the table when, when somebody gets your email marketing services. Uh, thank you for saying that. So basically, it's, uh, it's the shift from the cost to benefit, right? Instead of seeing just what's the cost of sending, uh, what do I get? Do I get enough money so the cost is totally offset by how much money I make as an e-commerce uh, store? If yes, then that's that's your answer. So yes. it's a really easy calculation. Yes, and I mean, most of the businesses, they have already an email database and they are not using it as professional as they could use it, which is like really, really important. They have maybe 100,000, but... They never used it. Maybe they use it for lookalike campaigns and so on in Facebook and so on, which which is good. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, they could also use this other channel in order to drive more sales through this. Indeed. But this actually happens for real. Like we go to customers and we ask mm -hmm. how many subscribers do you have? And they said, we don't know. Let's check. And we find 100,000 subscribers that they never communicated with. And it's, it's such a loss. And of course, when you yeah. start communi communicating, the, the sales come instant because the, there's no big delay. It's not like something like hope and pray. Let's see if it works. If you start sending, if I'm sending now, uh, in one week, I will see the sales definitely. So it's not, it's a direct uh, uh, connection. It takes a while to do the, the initial setup indeed. But once you start sending with the proper strategy and commercial plan behind, The results come uh, come instant, and uh, the ROI, the return on investment on this, because you don't pay the, the big guys, you don't pay Meta, you don't pay Google for for this. It's yeah, direct it's your marketing. own thing. Yeah. yeah, it's your own the uh, own the media that people uh, decided to give you uh, you the, their email address. So it's there's no media budget in, involved here. It's zero media budget. Yeah. No, I mean of course, as, as I said before, this is a great way, especially for e-commerce businesses to try this email marketing from your company in order to see what difference it makes if you just send a newsletter or if you work with the, with the real guys, with you guys that know how to do this in a proper way. 
And tell me now a bit about more about loyalty programs, because as I said before, there are big companies where I know they have this loyalty program. And now there is a smaller e-commerce business. And how can you implement this loyalty program? Because they will probably think, oh, it's really expensive or we need really big technology in order to implement it. How do you guys can implement this? Indeed, the loyalty program, you don't have to be big to build a loyalty program. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a little bit of two layers on this. And I would like just to highlight the two layers first. Okay. So first layer is the foundation. In order to have loyal customers, you need to do normal things really good. And by normal things, I mean, if I see a photo on the site, I see a price, I see a delivery date, this has to happen. The product that I will see in the box is the product I see on the photo. The price is right and the delivery time is, uh, is exactly what, what you promised. So this yeah. is the foundation. Without this, there is no point in building a loyalty program. I mean, it will, it will I, be... In... I fully agree. I have to... I, have to uh, I just came to think about something that I ordered last week for this <laughs> microphone, actually. I wanted to have like something in front of the microphone mm -hmm. in order to protect it better. And I ordered this from an online shop in Romania. And um, what happened was, was that um, I put there that the delivery address is different to the factura address. Mm -hmm. So the delivery you address is yeah. home place. Yeah. And uh, the other one was from the company. What yeah. happened was that somehow the delivery address was not sent to Cargos. So the Cargos guy called and he is like, I'm there. And I said, I'm also there. <laughs> and he was at the wrong address. So what happened? Um, they delivered it to the wrong address. Of course, they took it back. And now I'm as a customer that did everything correct, needs to go there to the warehouse to pick it up, which is like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Can't be okay. And I wrote to the, to the online shop, told them about this. And they said, yeah, we sent an email to, to the delivery guy, but I think the actual problem is that their e-commerce system didn't transmit the correct address to Cargos, so that will happen over and over again for the clients that change the address for delivery. And this is, this is exactly what you meant. You should at least to the basics in order to get loyal clients, because for me, that was the last order I did at this client. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. So the foundation was missing. And if they will say, we give you 100 points for this purchase, you will say, yeah, but I don't care anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, good, good point. I mean, I fully understand what you mean. And um, not only in Romania, also in Germany, I know there are some basics that that are missing. And when these basics are missing, I, I agree with you that doesn't make sense to make any loyalty program because you don't build up loyal customers if you deliver your things always one week later as it's written on your website. Indeed, indeed. So this is the first po point, the foundation. The second is the actual loyalty program. And for the loyalty program, <clears throat> there are many types of loyalty programs, but the more, more uh, used ones is, are tier-based. So you start as a customer, as an end customer, start... Mm -hmm buying from the e-commerce store and as you buy you get more points and these points become something good like free delivery for example for you mm -hmm. uh, also you can uh, get points not only from buying stuff but also from non-commercial co commercial activities like reviewing a product that you just bought you uh, place a review you get some points or recommending to a friend or some other engagement activities or subscribe to the newsletter, uh, for that matter. So this is a this is a tier, so-called tier program. Uh, so you mm -hmm. you you go up, and the second is uh, is is called uh, earn and burn, which means you earn points and you burn points. By burning, it means, for example, I get one thousand points from different activities like previous purchases, and then I decide to use these one thousand points to get an extra super discount on on my next purchase or get a free delivery, or get some kind of, uh, for example, extended warranty, or a free installation, or any benefit that uh, the, the final customer, the consumer, would want. 
So these are the two two big ways of doing uh, loyalty programs. And maybe I would just mention a third, which is called paid loyalty, which means the final customer, the consumer, pays a fee, like you see in Amazon Prime, for becoming a loyal customer, which is counterintuitive a little bit. And this so is I the pay opposite. something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I pay something to become a loyal customer, but then I get some benefits. And for Amazon Prime, it's uh, it's uh, in the range of uh, delivery cost, delivery time. So uh, this this benefit is very uh, very important for the for the customer, but also for very important for the for the e-commerce shop. Because in the case of Amazon, if you have Prime, then you want to buy more because you already paid. Um, I don't and even and know also that. you have Prime Prime Video. I mean, there's and you also the have Prime Prime Video. Yeah, I mean, the, of course, you have to be a big market player in order to do the other way around that others pay mm -hmm. for for this. But the first two things that you mentioned are really interesting. So now to I'm curious now with the technical part because when you explain this to me, I'm the business owner with my online shop with Sports Nutrition. I'm thinking, wow, yeah, but. I have this software here and I know it doesn't have the capabilities. So how can I, how can I implement this? Because I think uh, there need a lot to happen. I need developers mm -hmm. and so on in order to implement it. Is there not a better way or cheaper way for that? Indeed. So one way is to get a really expensive, usually loyalty program uh, software that you need mm -hmm. to integrate with everything, with your e-commerce, with your email marketing. And that's one way to do it if you have a lot of money. Uh, if you don't have a lot of money, uh, then, yeah. or if you want to save some money, then mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, some tools that have email marketing and loyalty programs all in one. So if you use I... these tools that, that uh, we, we can recommend to, to you, then you have all in one and there is no integration required because you already have the integration with the e-commerce shop. Uh, for the email marketing uh, part and uh, the loyalty is pre-integrated with the email marketing and then it's all in one it's really good price uh, subscription and uh, uh, it's it, you, you can start really fast so the the starting uh, time it's uh, it's really fast and, and easy um, why why do we need this <clears throat> this is important And to, to answer you this question, why do we need this? I will uh, first say, why do loyalty programs fail? And the reasons why they fail are, it's too complex and people don't understand it, obviously. Second, you don't give enough and people say, yeah, I, I won't even bother for so low. Third, you don't communicate this. So we have a lot of customers who started the loyalty programs and saying, we ask them, okay, let me see your loyalty program, how people can know about it. And they said, it's written somewhere in terms and conditions. Yeah, this will not work. <laughs> nobody nobody, is, no, nobody yeah. is reading that. Yeah, it, it, it's a, a live thing, the loyalty program. You need to constantly be communicating. Like you have 500 points. When you get to 600, you get to gold level and then you have a million benefits. So... It's you kind, kind of like constantly. It, it, it's kind of like at Mega and Marsh. Always when I buy Card Mega, always when I buy in the online shop, should somebody say not Card Mega but Card? I don't know. Or have nutrition? some kind yeah. of uh, widget on the side saying, uh, "Hey, dear Gold customer, why don't you do this so you can get some free delivery or some some small things that don't have to be? Yeah. It's not a, a really the big rewards." You don't have to win a BMW to, to be part of a loyalty program. Little things like a, a free product, like free delivery. These little things that don't really cost too much money for the e-commerce store, but bring additional value to the consumer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to come back to this question with the implementation. So to implement it with this tool, the cheaper version, does it work with API or how do I have to imagine it? It works with an API, I guess. Yeah, there are two options here. Either you use a regular, let's say, uh, e-commerce platform like Shopify, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the, the most popular ones, which are already mm -hmm. pre-integrated, nothing to be done. You just, uh, you just click and it works. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a very special e-commerce platform, maybe a custom-built one, 
it takes about two days of work to, to do the implementation via APIs. So it's not a great amount of work to do a full implementation, even if you have a full custom platform. So how long in order to set up like a loyalty program? Because you, you said there doesn't, doesn't take so long. So how much time by estimation around? Indeed. But then maybe we deep dive in, a, in another episode on this because loyalty program is also not only about the loyalty program itself. So how many points do I give? Uh, what, are the, what is the rewards uh, catalog? It's also about mm -hmm. the commercial strategy behind. It's also about the financial calculations. Like, for example, we ask our customers, what is your cost of acquiring a new customer? Customer acquisition costs, uh, so-called. And uh, funny or sadly enough, people really don't know. They say, we don't know. And then we start from this. We find what is the customer new customer acquisition cost. And then we say, let's say it's 10%. And then we ask the question, how much would you spend on a loyalty program? Would it be 8%? Would it be 12%? Because we have a reference point, the 10% cost of acquiring a new customer. Yeah. So then you build the financial model behind the loyalty program. How much can you spend in order to build this, uh, this uh, loyalty? And also, you have many administrative things to consider. Like, you need to, to build a, a very good... Uh, Uh, how is called like the contract, the contract of the loyalty program. Ah, you know, yes, the, yes, the general terms. Like the general terms, mm -hmm. you need to think very uh, good about uh, fraud protection because if you give something for free, people will want to take more of it for free. Yeah, sneaky sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of things to to be concerned uh, when you build this. But from the technical perspective, just setting, let's say, uh, thinking about tier, uh, tier programs, so tier one, tier two, let's say mm -hmm. silver, uh, silver, gold, platinum, this, uh, this is uh, really easy, but it's just the, the tip of the iceberg. It's just the, the, the final part before you go live. Yeah. The thinking before and the setup before, it takes much more to, to be thought, really thought uh, so through. i would say we make another session just for loyalty program because it would it would make this podcast even longer than it is that um, sounds great thank you but on email marketing i think i got the idea you are not just sending out uh, a newsletter it's much more <laughs> more on indeed, that indeed. and um I mean, if I want to have more information, the best is to visit your website, ecomasters.net. Yep. Just What go on the website and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, book, book a meeting with uh, one of my colleagues and uh, we can guide you through the entire process. That sounds awesome. And also people can probably connect with you via LinkedIn. Yeah, you can connect me with me on LinkedIn on any social, uh, social platform and you will find me at uh, Cosmin Costea, basically my name. Uh, in different <laughs> different versions. Awesome. Um, we will also put your data then in our description of the video so people can connect with you and also ask you more about this topic or ask your email marketing services. And um, how does it work when I want to work with you? You have first a kickoff call or how does it work? Um, it's really easy. So first for the, for the e-commerce stores that reach out to us, so we have what we call a discovery call, where we basically uh, mm -hmm. meet in order for us to understand their, their needs and how their needs fit our capabilities. And then we, we come, come back with a very tailored proposal for them. How can we help them specifically make more money through uh, mm -hmm. e-commerce and email marketing? And then We start implementing. We start implementing. Usually, it takes uh, uh, more or less a month to do everything before we start the entire strategy, the, the entire all the integrations, uh, the creative concept, the data analysis, everything, and then give or take. In one month, we can send the the first uh, email, being a campaign or an automation, and from that they start uh, making money really fast. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Cosmin. Thank you very much for having you here. Thank you for diving with, with you into the email marketing furthermore. And yeah, as we said before, we need to make another session about loyalty programs. So I'm looking forward 
uh, to another session with you about uh, loyalty programs for clients. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day. Thank you for the opportunity.